All right, today we're going to be going over this 2017 E1466 MacBook Air that randomly stopped turning on. So, the first thing I always check on these is PPBus G3 Hot because it's pretty common for uh, one of the tantalum capacitors on the PPBus rail to short to ground and that will cause no power. And that is probably the most common cause of these 1466s that just randomly stopped turning on. So, I'm going to measure PPBus on the um, fuse right here, and it is 8.59 volts. Move my meter right here so you guys can see it. So 8.59 volts. Um, so that is present, 8.59, 8.60, no difference. So with that being said, we now know our issue is going to lie somewhere on the other side of um, PPBus G3 Hot. Now, one other rail that we could check really quick is PM Sleep S4L. Um, and that'll give us another good idea of what's going on. So if PM Sleep S4L is missing, that means we have a, uh, an issue on the other side of PM Sleep S4L or with PM Sleep S4L itself. So anything PCH support, maybe an S5 issue, um, regardless. Now, if we do have PM Sleep S4L, that means that we either have an issue on S4, S3, SO, something, probably power switch is bad. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the board view here and see where PPBus G3 Hot can be, I mean PP3 before PP. PM Sleep S4L can be found. We can see that PM Sleep S4L is pretty much going to be coming from the CPU and it um, is going to go to a few different places here. So I'm looking for the easiest place that I can measure this. And that is usually going to be on this resistor right over here um, near our Thunderbolt and screen area. So R8117. So let's go ahead and measure that. With our board plugged in, um, our black lead on ground, of course, and red lead on our resistor, we are measuring zero volts with no pulses. So that leads me to think that we have some issue going on um, prior to PM Sleep S4L. So our differential diagnosis for PM Sleep S4L could be several different things. So we could have a bad clock chip, we could have an issue anywhere within the PCH support circuit, we could have an issue with U1950. Um, we could have an issue with the S5 rails not coming on. We could have a dead CPU. We could have so many things that can cause this. So anyway, let's go ahead and give a look over of this board. Now, this board is a little bit dirty from what we can see here, but it doesn't look overly bad. So let's just look at it. So we have this usual dust collection that happens on pretty much all of these after they've been in use for a few years, but it doesn't look terribly, terribly bad. So we have crumbs. Again, it's just dirty. There's no, no real corrosion. What I'm looking for here is obvious corroded resistors or traces. You'll see green collection on probe points, stuff like that. SPI termination resistors can cause this. But this just looks dirty. It looks, it's just filled with like small crumb particles, stuff like that. CPU V core area can cause this too. This is interesting right here, a little scratching. Camera circuit looks clean. So it's mainly this side of the board. There's a little thermal paste here. Maybe this, yeah, that's weird. Um, the main area that gets corroded on these is this edge of the board here and this is because it's right near the vent this is where it's going to be pulling air in it's going to get dust here and it's going to con if you get enough dust it will condense moisture here so dust does have the ability to uh, kind of trap moisture under it and that's when you get issues so from this side it looks fine and next thing i'm going to want to do is tilt the board to see if we can see anything that's corroded um, if I tilt it, because often si oftentimes we could actually miss stuff um, that's not present uh, that we can't see if the board is not at an angle. So like under a chip, on the pins of a chip, or something like that. So that's what I'm just going to have a look at. I'm going to reposition my scope a little bit. just really dirty. Yeah, the board is just really, really dirty. There's our clock crystal and our clock chip. And all right, so this is a little bit concerning. If we look closely at our clock chip, we see something a little bit different than what we see that we see on other components on this board. 
the solder is kind of degraded a little bit. If you look right there, it's kind of degraded. It's not bad, but that's a definite possibility of causing our issue. So, yeah, see, it's kind of corroded there. Now, clock, what clock does, clock is something very important that computers need, of course. So, clock is going to put everything on a timer. It's going to put the CPU, the PCH, the graphics, everything like that on a timer so they can all communicate effectively. And without clock, they can't really talk to each other and it, it just doesn't work. So without clock, our board is definitely not going to turn on. Now, I don't know for sure if that's our issue yet, but I'm going to go ahead and try a new clock chip and see if it works, because it is a little bit corroded. Just on those two pins there. was definitely not bad. I've definitely seen worse, and I kind of would be borderline surprised if this was the issue, but it's definitely worth, worth a shot here. So I'm going to get a little flux around this. And I'm going to replace this. Now, given the state of this board, we are going to have to ultrasonic it, too, because, I mean, it was pretty corroded. Or pretty dusty, not corroded. A little flux around there. Now oftentimes stuff can hide under here, so yeah, this one does not look overly bad at all. There was definitely some signs of it being corroded right there, but it's not not terrible. Right here. This would probably be the cause of our issue. If it was Get this stuff right here. But again, that's not overly terrible. Anyway, let's clean this up. Let's grab a new clock chip and let's see if it um, what's this was the issue. Let's get a little bit of flux here. Pull our new chip out of the reel carefully so I don't fling it across the room and have to grab another one. That should be good. Let's let it cool down and let's see if the board works. Okay, and for our moment of truth, let's plug in our power adapter. We have our nice uh, A1502 DC inboard plugged in, which worked nice for testing on these instead of grabbing a whole I.O. board. And plugged in. Come on, spin. Spinning fan. All right, so the clock chip does appear like it was the issue. Now, it's really, really important um, when you get boards that randomly stop turning on, just look at them really thoroughly because if we looked at this board, it looked pretty good. Um, that clock chip looked fine. It was just a little, little bit of um, garbage on it that we could barely see. So visual inspection is very, very important um, when it comes to, uh, to board repair in general. So you need to have a really good trained eye to catch some of these faults. Um, this wasn't really even a case of using our brain. It's just using our tools and you know, our eyes to look at it. Um, but let's put this back in the enclosure and let's see if there's actually boots um, because for all we know, we could be greeted by no post because of a CPU issue after the fact. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, we have this back in the enclosure. Um, we just, I just have the trackpad and screen plugged in and our DCM board, of course, and the SSD. Let's give it a minute. 
All right, and now that is an Apple logo. So let's see if this boots, but this should be good to go. I'm going to keep my hand closed just in case the customer has something on their screen that we don't want to show. I just bumped the charger, so luckily it didn't shut off. Let's see, will we finally get a MacBook that doesn't start in recovery, or will we get fooled again? Going to be booting a little bit slow because the CPU is throttled from the I.O. board being unplugged as usual. Um, anytime you have a thermal sensor that's missing, these things will go high fan speed and throttle the CPU to around 800 megahertz. So. And look at that, uh, the first MacBook ever, not really, on stream that didn't boot into recovery mode. Anyway, uh, this is fixed, so we're going to go ahead and ultrasonically clean this, stress test it, and then this will go back to uh, the customer. And this is another MacBook saved from the landfill. So, thanks for watching, and I hope this video helps you solve your problem in some way.